All right. So we've seen that we can use percent %d to print out integers. Let's do a little bit of this here. OK, so we've seen we can use percent %d to print out integers, percent %f to print out floats, um, percent %c to print out characters. Um, a summary of those conversion specifiers are shown in our, in our handout, in our lecture notes. Even though I've been using percent %d for integers, you could actually use percent %i as well. Um, so if I want to quickly maybe print out um, an integer, I could do something like this, where let's print out both the total, put in a new line so that we can see it, and I'll print out um, the int is um, and then percent %d, what we've seen before, and then have it jump outside. I know it'll jump outside and grab this value, and let's initialize it and declare it. So I've initialized it. I've declared it with the int val, and then setting it to 2 is the... So this declares it, this initializes it to 2. Um, and when I run this, let's get the total and the int val is a 2 and the int val is indeed a 2 although I've been using percent %d I certainly could have used percent %i um, and you'll see that it still gives me the same result so we can print out integers, decimals, floating points remember that scanf when you're using it um, it, it matters as to whether or not you use F or LF. We'll talk more about that when we get into to scan F. Um, floating point numbers, printing them out in scientific notation, exponential notation. And then characters, we've seen an example used to a percent %C, percent %O for octo, and percent %X would print out the value as a hexadecimal. Um, and then we've not looked at the percent %s conversion specifier. So maybe we'll take a quick look at the percent %s. Um, let's do a very quick example of that. Uh, and I'll put that here, copy and paste. And in this example, we print out a string, percent %s, a number, a percent %d. So don't forget that that first quotation mark um, is what printf heavily relies on. So it starts printing out from there. It prints out an a space string, and then it says percent %s, and it knows that it's going to look at the first argument that comes in outside of that quotation mark and it'll see the Jaguar and it knows to print it out as a string and then it sees a percent %d and it goes to the next argument and so it will print out um, whatever value n is um, or let's make this an existing value and let's do a multi-line comment to get rid of these things that are being printed out and let's run this and what you should see is that a string Jaguar and a number two both get printed out so in this case this was a literal this was a hard-coded string um, and we'll show you how to print out uh, string variables or arrays of characters that can be interpreted as string So let's say that I want to oh, print out a variable that contains a string. There is no string data type, but there is um, an array of characters. And so an array of characters 
would look something like this, where we have Joe and E and if I try to, and then let's just try to, I want to print out name. So the, uh, the, uh, the string name, so let's make this the string name. And then let's have it print out only that. And let's make this name. So when it prints it out, it prints out Joe, and it didn't print out, it, um, it printed it out with no mistakes, with no problems. So it looks like it works, um, but there is some risk in how we have told it to print out this string Joe. We were lucky in that there were no errors because typically a well-formatted string needs to, yeah, I can't make it come up as an error, but a well-formatted string needs to have a terminating character. And that's that slash zero is needed um, for it to properly print it out. Sometimes when you try to print out an array of characters or work with an array of characters that's not properly terminated, the function doesn't know where to stop so this is how it knows how to stop and so you run the risk of running into problems so somewhere um, in the in memory there must have been a zero of some sort that was printed out or that was in there that allowed this to just know to go j-o-e and to stop there so you really need um, a terminating character to, to protect against errors so there is a string. Notice that I just gave it the name of the array. Um, and that's all, that was all that was required. Also notice that when I typed in this string, J-O-E, I had to type a single quote, a J, another single quote, and a comma. That's one, two, three, four characters, four more, four more and then one, two, three, these four. So I had to type in um, four times one, two, three, four, essentially 16 characters I had to type to create this string. Um, C allows you to create a string in a shorter way. Um, like this, J-O-E. Now, when I run this, it should still work exactly the same way, and it prints out a Joe, and so it's fine. Now, the number of elements in this array is not three, because this format with the double quotes is smart enough to put in um, a slash zero, even though it doesn't show up here. So these two lines, line 9 and line 10, are equivalent. Line 9 and line 10 are exactly the same. They place the same characters in memory. Um, so it says J-O-E, uh, but in fact it's J-O-E with a slash 0.